Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Lord, open our lips. And at thy mouth shall thy name praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. 
All of the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all of the families of nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come to make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The reading is from John. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love is revealed among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, and not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be among the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No, lo no one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we, are able, we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and we believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this way, in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because we first loved us. Those who say, I love God, and hate their brothers or sisters, are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen, God cannot love whom he has not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I spoke to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The word of the Lord. Thanks 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 be to God. God. Splendor and honor. Let us together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let the people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the ways of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty God, whom truly to know is everlasting life, Grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to begin my message today by telling you a little bit about a former supervisor of mine from my days as a teacher before I entered the ordained ministry. Bibi, as we affectionately called her, was an extraordinary woman and an extraordinary leader. She was also a human being as flawed and fallible as any of the rest of us. She had a hot temper and an intense nicotine addiction. But she also had a charisma and an unflagging dedication to excellence that few could deny. Under her leadership, a school that had consistently ranked last in the nation for academic achievement and even basic safety, had tripled its graduation rate and successfully launched an international baccalaureate program for its most talented students in just three short years. Bibi could be capricious and unpredictable, and heaven help the person who crossed her. But at the end of the day, this extraordinary woman had a quality that was hard not to love. Whether circumstances were favorable or unfavorable, whether she was popular or hated, she exuded a steady confidence that she was doing the right thing, and she forged ahead with dogged determination. 
Many of the students and faculty feared her. A few would even be so bold as to curse her to her face. And yet, when push came to shove, nearly 100% of the people under her leadership would say that she was indeed the best person for the job. Now, there are thousands, maybe millions, of BBs in the world. What is it that makes them? What is that invisible something that turns an ordinary, fallible human being into a force of nature, into a faithful hero? Today's readings, both from the first letter of John and the Gospel of John, speak of this mysterious act of abiding in God and God abiding in us. This is beautiful and compelling imagery, but what does it mean? Perhaps an important place to start is with what it doesn't mean. Jesus tells us that if we abide in him and he in us, we can ask for whatever we wish and it will be done for us. Now, if we pass over this statement too quickly, it can sound like this. Abide in me, and there no evil will ever happen to you, and any and every desire of yours will come to pass. And quickly at that. Now at the rock bottom level of our eternal souls, I actually believe that this is a true statement. But at every other level, it can take us into some very dangerous territory. Has some catastrophe happened to you? Maybe you got sick, had an accident, perhaps suffered financial ruin? Well, you must be out of sync with God, because things like that don't happen to those who abide in God's will. Now, this kind of thing is thought and said by people of faith way too often, and it's called theodicy. And it makes a mockery of this beautiful imagery of abiding in God and what happens when we do. And it can do great damage to a person's psyche. We don't need to look very far to see the plain truth that people who believe, people who strive with every fiber of their being to know God, to love God, and to do God's will in the world, still face challenges and even disasters. Jesus even tells us in more than one place that if we're prophesying the truth, most of the world will hate us and perhaps even openly attack us. So this image of abiding in God and what happens when we do is definitely not a promise of uninterrupted outward prosperity or even safety. In fact, I believe this image points to something that cannot be perceived by our usual senses at all. It's invisible and untouchable, and yet it's something we know well when we're in its presence. It's what the BBs of the world possess. Perhaps what might be helpful here is another biblical image. 
the image of the ever-flowing stream. God's will, God's activity in the world is like a mighty river that slowly but inexorably flows toward mercy, toward justice, toward peace, toward health, toward everything that is desirable at the deepest level. But like any river, this one has some challenging features. There are snags and hidden hazards. There are rapids and places where we can get spit up on the shore. There are eddy currents that if we fail to widen our gaze enough, can make it seem like the river is flowing in the opposite direction from its true current. So the question that is presented to us is this. All of us creatures must get in the river. About that, we have no choice. But what is up to us is how we will travel it. Will we go with the current or try to fight against it? Will we let the snags and hazards undo us? Or will we patiently learn to navigate them with ever-increasing skill? In the first letter of John, the author makes the bold and unique declaration that God is love, and that those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Traveling with this great river's current, in spite of all obstacles, is what it means to abide in love. And this is not something that looks the same at all times and in all places. In fact, it looks different in every time and place. There is a moment for love to be kind and gentle, and there is also a moment for it to be fierce and unyielding. There are times when love means setting clear boundaries, and times when it means throwing them to the wind. On the surface, Love can look wild and turbulent. But in the midst of all this, there is something happening at the level of the soul that is anything but wild and turbulent. It can be entirely invisible to the outside world, but it is undeniably real. It is settled and confident. It is the state of abiding in God and God abiding in us. I believe that this is the state that all of the great faithful heroes of our past and our present have discovered. And this state is available to all of us. The one thing required of us is that we make the pursuit of it our uncontested first priority. The grace is always there, but if we allow other agendas and distractions to claim our attention, we may miss it. But if and when we find it, we will know there is a hard-to-miss sign of the state of abiding in Christ and Christ abiding in us. All of the trials and tribulations of the outside world may not let up one bit. In fact, they may even increase. But within, we no longer mark them as troubles. Deep within, we receive everything as grace, everything as being part of the current of that river that is carrying us 
to a heavenly destination, even things we are called to outright oppose. To the outside world, we probably start to look crazy, but we recognize in this state that we are actually becoming more sane than ever. And so, my friends, the invitation is out. Shall we embark on this adventure? Shall we seek every moment of every day to abide in God and to lay ourselves open for God to abide in us? Shall we abide in love and let love abide in us? Such a state is a treasure of inestimable value, and it's ours for the taking if we truly want it. Let us pray with joy to our risen Lord, saying, Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, we thank you for the church you have built here on earth to witness your power and love. Thank you for the risen life you offer to all your faithful people. Today, we lift up to you, to your blessing, all people and assemblies who gather in the divine name. We, the Episcopal, no, we remember especially the Anglican Communion, including Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, and the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East. We remember also the Episcopal Church in this land and our diocese, 
including Michael, our presiding bishop, Mark, our bishop, and Grace Church in Martinez. In our local community, we remember before you Congregation Beth Emick in Pleasanton. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, we thank you for the foretaste you offer in your resurrection of that day when every nation and people will live in perfect peace and harmony. Thank you for giving us all people, especially those in positions of public trust and power, a desire for that day and the will and means to help bring it about. We remember before you Joe, our president, Gavin, our governor, Bob, our mayor, and all those who serve in legislative assemblies or judicial roles in this and every land. Thank you for your guidance and providence over every nation and its leaders. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Thank you, risen Christ, for overcoming the world's troubles and fears. Thank you for keeping us focused on you and the power of your resurrection during this time of pandemic and all the challenges it brings. We remember before you today all those who care for others in body, mind, or spirit, especially all doctors, nurses, police, firefighters, educators, and Brad O and Brad S. Thank you for pouring out your love and protection upon them and upon us all. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Risen Christ, thank you for gathering this congregation of St. Bartholomew's together in awe of you and affection for one another. Thank you for the blessings you pour out upon us, together and individually. We remember before you today, especially, these members of our congregation. We pray for Cynthia, Bill B and Michael R, for Anne and George, and these in military service, Aaron, Joey, Abigail, Valerie, Amber, Christopher, and Taylor. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Thank you, risen Lord, that even exalted at God's right hand, you are still our great physician. We thank you for the healing mercies you pour into the lives of all those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit. We remember before you, these especially, who have requested our prayers. We pray for healing. We pray for Olivia, Becky, Brett M, Carol, Kathy, Chalopi M, Dave R, David, Dawn and Wendy, Doris, Aaron, Esteban, Miroslava and Tamara, Glennis, Geraldine, Helen, Umberto, Candida, and family, for Janice and Bravo, for Joanne, for Liz B, for Laura, for Luke, for Marion, for Marge and family, for Marie R, Mary L, Mary M, for Marissa and family, for Monty and Judy, for Nick, for Nina, for Michael, Sandra, and Henrietta, for Michael E, for Sylvia P, for Steve W and children, for Tamara S, for Robert, for Reverend Jennifer Nelson and family, the Sweeney, Rudolph, and Plemons families, the Herman family, the Purcell family, the Moon family, the Ruzika family, the Bohr family, and the Montgomery family. 
We wish healing prayers for all of God's children who have gone missing. May you all be rescued and feel God's warm love for you. We also wish a happy anniversary to Carl and Laura, a happy first birthday to Luca, and congratulations to Cameron for choosing the perfect school to further your education. Alleluia. Thank you, risen Lord. Thank you, risen Christ, that in bursting forth from the tomb, you have paved the way for all the departed to enjoy eternal life. We thank you especially for these servants who have entered into your nearer presence. We pray for Clifford Willibus, for Jennifer R., for Sharon H., for Linda G., for John M., for Marie R., for Vern P., for Joan B., and for Elda M. We gratefully and joyfully await the day when they and we will rise with you to the life immortal. Alleluia. Thank, Thank you, you, risen Lord. Lord. And now, O oh Christ, with grateful hearts, we offer you thanks for all the blessings, yet unspoken, that you have given us. And we bring before you with hearts and voices all of our prayers and concerns. We now gather all our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and those too deep for words, in the words of St. John Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen.
Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. alleluia.